Hey, what's going on everybody? And a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And today we ask that age old question, which Buffalo Trace single barrel is the best? Is it Blanton's or is it Elma T. Lee? Run the VT. All right then folks, let's get into today's video, shall we? So how we'll do this comparison is we'll pour them into glasses and then we'll do it blind and then pick apart the whiskies as best we can that way. So let's go ahead and get these whiskies into glasses here. I have already two glasses labeled. Let's get this guy open. This is the Alma T. Lee. How's the Coke pop? Oh, it's a good one. It's a little splashy though. So these are looking like more or less the same color in the glass. That's the Alma T. Lee. Yeah, this is the Blanton's. And just to give you a little bit of information about the Blanton's bottle here. Okay, that's a good, excellent pour. So this is 10 to 20 is the dump date. And then the number on the whole C is gonna be B for Blanton's. So, you know, if that's something that you're into. And then also stored in warehouse H on Rick number 13. This is coming in at 93 proof, which is 46.5% alcohol, and the Elma TD is coming in at 45% alcohol or 90 proof. So what we'll do is we'll have my wife mix these up and then we'll get into the tasting. All right then folks, the glasses have been mixed up for me and I have no idea which is which. So then let's get into glass number one here. Uh, let's see what we can pick apart on the nose and kind of how it sits in the glass. So it's not gonna be too thick in the glass just because of the proof or ABV. It does have a nice little coating on the glass, which is quite surprising. But all in all, it kind of looks a little touch of thin. Color-wise, we're looking at kind of like a light amber color. Nose and notes. Getting a big vanilla punch right off the bat there. It's more of a, it's more of a sweet vanilla than it is maybe of like a, like a, like a dried vanilla bean note. Thinking like a vanilla frosting, and then again like a, a um, like a dessert cherry jumping up to the glass, so kind of like a candy cherry or like a baking cherry, which is what I expect to get that on both of these because they're both Buffalo Trace products, and cherries pretty much you're able to pick that up in like all of their products, apart from maybe the wheaters and the rice, of course. A touch of caramel, no real heat on the nose here at all. So caramel, cherry, vanilla notes really dominate here. I'm getting a touch, a touch of oak spice, but not too much yet. So let's go in for a taste on glass one here. I'm getting a little bit more spice on the palate here. It's definitely more of a pepper spice there. And also the vanilla is definitely still there coming right through really nicely. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, of like a pepper a pepper cream ale beer. So we're like, uh, sometimes they make like chili cream ale beers. And it kind of tastes a little bit like that because you have the, you have like the vanilla note there as well. And you also have like that chili spice cutting through it. And as I was saying that, I had a really nice powder chocolate note that kind of just kicked into my mouth there as well. Let's go in for another taste on glass number one here. A lot of cherry dominates, that spice is definitely going through. Towards the back end then on the finish is kind of where that oak spice takes over. So it is a little bit hot in, in, in terms of like that oak spice, but it's not hot in terms of proof. It's got a pretty solid finish. So all in all, really well balanced whiskey. Nothing that's set in the world on fire thus far, but just like a solid quintessential Buffalo Trace whiskey there. So that was glass number one. Let's reset the palette and then we'll go into glass number two here. So just looking at glass two, much similar to the first one as well. Looks kind of thin in the glass, but it does coat uh, the Glencarron really well, which is quite nice because you always want to coat your Glencarrons just so you get more nose and notes because it's kind of traveling all throughout the inside of the glass. It's imprinted with those uh, that flavor and nose and profile. So let's go and fill it for a nose here. Again, very much the same color as glass number one, kind of like a light amber color. So nose and notes here. So I'm getting a little bit more of like a dustier oak note. I think we had more oak spice on the first one, but this is kind of like more of like a, like a Rickhouse dusty oak note. Not too much or not too overpowering, but it's definitely there. That's the first thing I pick up on. 
and then some big creamy vanilla notes there definitely similar to the first one in terms of like the vanilla direction that this one has not picking up any spice on the nose so in the first glass there was like a touch of spice on that nose not getting it on the second one buffalo trace cherries definitely there maybe it's a little bit more medicinal this time think more of like a more towards like a cough syrup cherry than uh, like a bacon cherry there's many different cherries out there maybe I need to put out like a cherry tasting chart and like an apple tasting chart because just because I say one apple you know it could mean something completely different or if I say one cherry it could be mean completely different so that's why it's always good to like specify some categories there or some fruits this is a really pleasant nose I get a little bit of citrus on here as well Maybe I'm thinking like a tangerine, mandarin, orange, kind of something in that family. Definitely nose is like a citrus oil, that's for sure. Let's go in for a taste on glass two here. So the nose on glass two was great. With the first bit of alcohol, or first a little bit of tasting I had here, it tastes a little bit flat. You get, even though I wasn't getting any spice on the nose, you do get a little bit of spice up front. There's not too much sweetness in the palate here. It's just more of like, kind of like that dusty oak note and like a touch of spice. And then it kind of drops off a little bit there towards that back end. I'm not really picking up any more of that citrus or any of those cherry notes. There's not too much vanilla coming through. Let's go in for another taste here. So on the finish on glass two, it can't, like I've said you know, with the palate, it kind of falls off a little bit. And then you just get like a little tingling of pepper notes or maybe like i would say actually tobacco because with tobacco you kind of like a, have like a dry and a spicy note so that's definitely kind of reminiscent there the whole palette and the finish has actually been quite dry so i'm a little bit disappointed in this class if i'm completely honest because just the to the palette is just and the finish is just kind of fallen off a little bit there so these are both single barrel products which means maybe the two whiskies i have in front of me today um, might be a lot different to the two whiskies if you have a plantains and an el matili that you might have just depends on current seasons and where they come from in the rick house so that's definitely something to keep in mind here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put them in order which one i feel like is probably the best out of the two and i'm not going to pause the camera here because i already know that because just tasting between two whiskies is fairly easy to decide and I've also been taking some more sips than probably what you can see on the camera there so what I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this first glass here was definitely better than this one I just felt like there was a lot more going on it was a lot more sweeter to drink it was a lot more complex in uh, the body and the palate albeit the second glass of the, the yeah, number two had a, I would say it had a better nose than glass one but it felt it just felt so short on the palate and on the finish that ultimately you know the first glass came out the winner it's a bit disappointing actually because the, the nose is really good and it, it kind of set expectations maybe a little bit too high with that being said let's kind of find out which one is the best out of these two so we'll just go die right in glass number one here is going to be b for bravo and that is going to be that is going to be blanton's so I'm saying that Blanton's is better than Elma T. Lee. Um, so if I'm completely honest, I kind of thought that was Blanton's because I've tried Elma T. Lee a little bit before in the past and it's just always just been a little bit disappointing. It kind of matched up to my beliefs about Elma T. Lee. It has a nice nose, but it generally always falls flat in the palate. Like I said, I've only tried a couple of different Elma T. Lees before and I've tried a lot more Blanton's, but I think on average, there's just better bottles of Blanton's out there than, than there is Elma T. Lees. So Blanton's is MSRP is around 60 to $70 and Elma T. Lees MSRP is actually around 40 to 50. So taking the secondary market prices out to the question, that kind of lines up, you know, Blanton's probably should cost more than Elma T. Lee because it's a better whiskey thus far. So if you get the option, and this is a difficult, recommendation i guess but if you get the option between these two and you want a better whiskey then you're probably better off choosing the blanton's however if you get them at msrp and you want something more rare and unique then elma is probably the better way to go 
it'll look better, I guess, on the shelf with friends coming over. But ultimately, if you want a better whiskey, a better tasted all round whiskey, Blanton's is probably the way to go. So hopefully you enjoyed what we're doing on the channel, folks. Hope you enjoyed today and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time, Blanton's came out victorious. Cheers.